martial arts that every person should know. Everyone should know these five martial arts based self-defense move. The first one is situational awareness. We're gonna get right into it. Situational awareness means pay attention to what's happening around you. Now it's not necessarily a move in that it's not a technique, but these five moves, five martial arts moves from self-defense that everybody should know or everyone should know are based on two concepts. One are techniques, elbows, knees, kicks, all the different techniques of martial arts that you can learn. We'll talk about those in this video and in next videos that we do. But we're also talking about what principles of self-defense work. What's the first principle of self-defense? It's always the same situation awareness. So the first of the five martial arts moves from self-defense that everyone should know is situation awareness, which means if you have a cell phone and you're out walking around, put it in your back pocket. If you need to use it to get directions or to communicate with somebody, stop, put your back against the wall, lift it up in front of your face so that you can see what's happening around you. A lot of self-defense happens or needs to happen when people jump or take opportunity to jump somebody when they're not paying attention. So most violent criminals are opportunists. They're not looking at somebody who looks confident and strong walking down the street, who's paying attention, who sees what's happening around them and say, that's the target. Instinctively, the thug, the criminal, the bad guy instinctively is looking for the person who's looking at the ground, who's withdrawn, who holds themselves in, or using the cell phone as in this, this uh, 45 degree syndrome. 45 degree syndrome means their head's down like this, they're standing there, and you see it. I saw it this morning, I followed this woman down the busiest road on my route in the morning. There's just traffic everywhere. There are accidents all the time, people coming in really fast. It's a wide lane road. Every cars move so fast, cars come in so fast, lots of drivers from lots of different places. And this woman in front of me is literally driving like this. And her actions show it. She stops, goes, stop, go. She almost runs off the road. She almost pulls into somebody else's lane. And it's all because she's distracted. Now, in the car, that's horrible. That's an accident waiting to happen. But for you, for self-defense, of the five martial arts moves for self-defense, everyone should know, you have to start with situational awareness. So again, if you need to use your cell phone, stop, put your back against the wall, and look around. If you're coming up to a corner and you're in an area that you're not familiar with or that you know is not a safe area, it's a dangerous area, and you're getting ready to come around the corner, make sure you're not, again, distracted by the cell phone or anything else. Step away from the wall, give yourself a little room, turn your head, see where you're going first, and then make your turn. When you practice situational awareness, it starts from when you leave your home in the morning, you open the door, you take a step outside, you look first at five yards, three to five yards around you, however cl uh, close, you know, whatever's around you, whatever corners there are, maybe there's a planter, who could be sitting by in there, you check that first, then you look up, you look across the street, you look down the hallway, you look at the building across the way, and you pay attention to what's happening around you, that's situational awareness. And yes, it seems like that's common sense, but again, common sense is wiped away when you get the cell phone in your hand. And, and it's, it's the cell phone more than anything else at any other time in human history. You now have the perfect distraction. It's designed to distract you and suck your focus in. And it's a great tool. It's a great productive tool. It's a communication tool. It makes us more modern. We're connected around the world now. This is how we connect. But when you're outside, back against the wall, when you go into a restaurant, you know, you, if you ever have a, a friend who's a police officer, maybe former law enforcement or former military, they like to sit with their back against the wall and they like to see the door, who's coming in the door, who's coming out of the bathroom, where's the kitchen, who might be coming out of there with a knife, who's angry, who's crazy. That's, that's situation awareness. That's where that whole thing starts. So make those decisions. How do you start to pay attention to what's happening as it's happening so that you can avoid the situation where you have to physically defend yourself. Now we're talking about both principles in these five martial arts moves for self-defense. Everyone should know we're talking about principles and techniques. The second one is going to be a technique. So the first one's a principle. First principle or strategy, situation awareness. Second is getting a better position, which is called the flinch block. We're calling this the flinch block. Now I learned this from courses with Tony Blauer from his books, I read his, uh, most of his books, I've watched a lot of his DVDs. I put a link below if you wanna get that DVD on, from Tony Blauer. Tony Blauer is kind of the gold standard of the techniques of self-defense that works. We're gonna talk about two other people in this video, 
both of whom I have no personal ongoing relationship with, both of whom I've learned from either in person shortly in a course or by watching their videos, by reading their books. The first is Tony Blower, the second one we'll come to in a minute. And his SPEAR program, his personal protection program, every time I go to another course and I work with uh, people who are law enforcement or people who are military, like special operators or uh, tier level operators, special forces, Navy SEALs, when I go to a course like that and they're talking about unarmed combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat, every single one of them that I've ever met references Tony Blower. And I say, that's funny, I've known, I knew Tony, I didn't know Tony Blower, I took the Tony Blower course like 20, 30 years ago, or however long ago it was. Uh, used to be at all the different circuits, you'd run into him, and he'd give it a lecture, and he'd show you some things. There were a couple guys doing it, but he was always been the best, and he's the one who's evolved, and his program is the best. Spear program is the name of his program. It's in the first link down below. But the idea of getting in a better position and the concept of a flinch block, your hands are up and open between you and the threat. So there's a bend. If you're in too close, it collapses, so you push your hands out a little bit. This is, comes from martial arts. Originally, the concept, the idea of having your hands up. Now, we know for a fact, if your hands are anywhere below your chin, you're gonna get hit. Anywhere from here to here, the brain can't send the message fast enough, the hands can't get up fast enough. So number two, the second of the five martial arts moves for self-defense everyone should know is gonna be the flinch block. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you the basics of it. If you're here in person, we'll train on it all the time. I'll teach it over and over again. But if you wanna to go to the source of the, the flinch block himself, go find Tony Blower. That's that first link below. So your hands are up and open between you and the threat. Now, if a punch is thrown, you naturally will flinch or withdraw into and behind your guard, no matter where the punch is coming from. A haymaker, a punch coming up, an uppercut, something coming down on top or a straight punch, you're naturally gonna pull back and it might hit you, but look at this. Your hands are between the threat and your face. So most likely it's gonna run into your hands, it's gonna bounce off, it's gonna deflect, and if it does hit you, it's a glancing blow. Compare that to this, this. This is the old fashioned stuff. This is, I've been to lots of courses way back in the day and this is what everybody was teaching 50 years ago. I, don't, I think it comes from Jeet Kune Do, I'm not sure exactly where. The bouncer's pose, they call this the bouncer's pose. And he's standing like this and he's ready to block it at any second. And it comes from Hubad Lubad. If you know anything about FMA or if you know anything about Jeet Kune Do or the Wing Chun, and all those things, I'm not saying it's wrong. All martial arts techniques have value in self-defense, but the highest value is gonna be when your hands are already in this position, interrupting their line of sight, interrupting their mental pattern. When, when a thug comes at you, you need to defend yourself. You're thinking about the five martial arts moves for self-defense, everyone should know. You already got uh, paid attention to situation awareness, but then they came too close. That's why you put yourself in this flinch block. You knew you're gonna have to defend yourself, and now all of a sudden your hands are like this. Most people, when they're approached by that thug, that bully, that remember, they're not looking for the strong, confident type. They're looking for the ones who are withdrawn, the ones who are distracted. And all of a sudden, for whatever reason, they find you and they come up and you're like, hey, buddy, back up. And you put your hands up between them. If they go low, you'll naturally bend down. Your hands will stay in front of you in the threat. So number two is that flinch block. Learn more about it below in that first link from Tony Blower. He does it much better than I do it. It's his program. I'm just repeating the best of what I've learned. Number three of the five martial arts moves for self-defense everyone should know is going to be from uh, one of my, I don't know why I didn't put his link below. Go look him up, Pat Mack, Pat McNamara. Now, I've known this for a long time. It's two punches and a lateral move. Punch, punch, and get out of the way. Throw some punches and get out of the way. That's very common. Now, it comes from Western boxing, which in my mind is the best thing you can learn for self-defense. The best martial arts you can learn for self-defense from a striking perspective with your hands is gonna be Western boxing. That's my personal opinion. And I wanna show you two reasons why. If you think of a Wing Chun punch, if you think of that one inch punch, that Bruce Lee one inch punch, or you think of a Wing Chun chain punch, those all have great value, but they're all done in very much a standing position or a static position. Your body's not moving. You learn how to do Western boxing, two things are gonna be different. One. Compared to a Wing Chun chain punch or Wing Chun Hubad Lubad or Bruce Lee's one inch punch, the first thing that's going to be different is you're going to hit a bag that's moving and it's going to come back as you punch and you're going to put gloves on because you can hit harder with gloves 
As you punch that bag, you're gonna build more dense, quick twitch muscle fibers that are gonna make you more explosive. You're gonna hit a thousand times harder than a one inch punch. I'm just gonna say it. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of blowback, a lot of, a lot of people who don't like that idea. Um, but yes, Bruce Lee himself did add in Jeet Kune Do, Western boxing, because he said, take the best of what works. And the only reason that I'm saying, don't focus just on the one inch punch that you can do, learn that. Learn everything you can, just like Bruce Lee said it. Learn everything you can, take what works. But what I'm saying is, if you could only learn one, and you're looking for the, uh, out of the five martial arts moves for self-defense everyone should know, and we got to number three, and I said, I want you to learn how to do two punches and get out of there. Two punches and get out of the way. And when I say lateral move, I literally move, mean moving to the side, moving laterally. So we can go front or back, we could go side to side. If I throw two punches and I move back, he just naturally comes in, I run into a wall or I trip. I almost just tripped over one of the balls sitting on the floor, one of the medicine balls there. So you don't wanna just move back when you fight. You don't wanna just move forward when you fight. You run into a lot of things when you do that. I want you to learn how to move to the side and later, ideally, the more time you spend on martial arts moves for self-defense, the more training you do in martial arts moves for self-defense, you're gonna to start to learn how to move back and to the side at the same time, or forward and to the side at the same time. You're gonna learn how not to just do a lateral move, but how to do a diagonal move where you're coming through that uh, transverse plane, moving here and moving here. But start today, two punches, one, two, and move to the side. As we break this down into principle, technique, principle, technique, I want you to know situational awareness. Number two, get in a better position, flinch block. Number three, from here, when you have to punch one, two, and then get out of there, move, make them miss. So you're gonna practice on a bag, punching one, two, and go to the side. Now I said there are two reasons that I prefer Western boxing as a martial art for self-defense over simply doing Taekwondo, Jeet Kune Do, Karate Do, even Kyokushin, even the other martial arts where they have some hard strikes. Boxing is the only one where they're punching your face over and over. Even Krav Maga. Krav Maga, which is a good system, a decent system, an okay system for self-defense. Even Krav Maga has a lot of good techniques, but they don't have a lot of practice hitting the face. When you do Western boxing, you're going to get boxed in the face. You're going to get hit in the face. You're going to get used to it. You're going to learn how to move your body. You're gonna have to learn how to take a punch and come back and punch. But you're gonna start with those jab, cross, two straight punches, straight, straight, move to the side, straight, straight, move to the side. And let me show you real quick. Pete says, as a disabled senior, no longer, so you had to get the spray. I missed part of that, Pete. We'll go back and we'll look at that. Let me show you my feet, though. I gotta bring the camera down. I just like to give you fair warning and move slowly. So I don't just uh, make everybody nauseous and dizzy. Let me drop this a little bit. I need to drop this for the fourth one anyway. My feet are here, one foot in front of the other. Doesn't matter which one, not at all. If you're right-handed, it's gonna be your left foot. If you're left-handed, you're just gonna have your right foot. But when you learn how to fight, when you learn how to be a boxer, you're gonna learn how to move forward and move back. Your feet will never cross. You're never gonna cross your feet because if you do, you'll trip yourself. So you're gonna practice those two punches Move to the side, one, two, move back to the side. When I go to the right, my right foot has to start. If not, I've crossed my feet, I'm gonna fall back and trip. They hit me hard, they rush me, they go to take me down, tackle me, hit me in the chin, and I come back and my feet are crossed, I'm on the ground. And then I have to go to the second video series, which is gonna be about ground fighting, but we're not doing that yet. We're here, two punches, move to the side, two punches, when I go to the left, step left, right. Don't step right, left, you'll cross your feet. So one, two, step, step. One, two, step, step. One, two, small steps, small steps. I'm bringing the camera back up, hold on. We'll just bring it a little bit because I want you to see my feet again here in a second. From here, when I move to the side, I push off of the front foot. When I move back that way, I push off of the back foot. You have to push your body, almost launching yourself sideways, Launch yourself sideways. Learn how to get out of the way. Throw two punches. And when you punch, learn how to squeeze those hands. Keep them nice and tight. You're gonna hit this way. Later, I'm gonna show you how to use palm strikes. Nice strikes, strike the neck, chop the neck, palm, 
right into the stomach, right up into the solar plexus. Take that hand elbow right through here, coming up under the chin, into the solar plexus. All those are good techniques. They're all effective for self-defense. I'm gonna show all of them to you, but first, from your first training, when you're learning five martial arts moves for self-defense, everyone should know you have to start with situational awareness. Get the phone in your pocket, stand up against the wall if you need to look at it. Bring it up so you can still see the horizon. Stop doing this. Number two, get into a better position. This is the flinch block. Get behind your hands. If the threat's right here, this bag, that's his face. My hands are here. I'm in a better position. You can quickly attack, drive, elbow. There's so many things you do from that flinch block. Number three, learn how to do two straight punches and a lateral move. One, two, and then later you can learn how to jab, cross, hook, uppercut, uppercut, over the top. You can learn how to move and hit the body, move and hit the, a million things you can do. But start with the basics so you're effective and so it works from the start. When you learn the five martial arts moves for self-defense, everyone should know. We come to number four, which is one of my favorite, Bruce Lee, or um, you see this every once in a while, uh, John Bone Jones from MMA, right? John Bone Jones had some of the best kicks of all martial artists and he broke legs all the time. And this guy did the oblique kick. The oblique kick you find in Jeet Kune Do, you find in Kung Fu, you find in some of the karate martial arts. And the oblique kick just comes with your knee pointing outside, out like this, and pushing down. Now I think I have to lower the angle again. And I apologize, one day, I was thinking over the weekend, with your support, a lot more of you are becoming members. A lot of you are joining, and I see your comments, I'm just too far, my eyes are too old to read them. And I appreciate your comments. I'll try to respond later when I watch this back. But put your comments in the uh, comment section too. If you haven't uh, become a subscriber, please subscribe. If you haven't joined, consider joining. But your support gives me the idea, I'm gonna hire somebody, or two or three, so that we can make more and more of these videos, get them done faster. I'll let somebody else spend the time editing them, because I'm not good at that anyway. And then maybe I create more value for you. You send me more information or more questions, more requests. And then we start to open up some more of this training. I have some more people I'm doing Zoom training with and Zoom calls. If you're interested in that, let me know. But this oblique kick, tip number four, you're gonna lift that knee and stomp. And think about that. If I'm in this fighting position here, I'm in my flinch block. I know I have my two punches and a lateral move, but maybe the best, and this is gonna lead us into number five, that's a good segue, but maybe the best thing to do is going to go into this, um, and Pete, I'm gonna answer your question real quick. This oblique kick coming right into his shin. Now, Pete just said that most fights end up on the ground, and that is not necessarily true. That's a very common, um, that's a very common myth. That's, all fights start on your feet, Pete. So, and I'm not, I'm not contradicting you or saying you're wrong, but consider it this way. Think about it this way. Yes, a lot of fights will end up on the ground, and I do advocate and teach grappling. I did uh, wrestling in high school. I, judo was my first martial art. I'm all about grappling, wrestling. I've done Hapkido for years and years and years, and when I can, I pick up what I can from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is a beautiful martial art. I advocate 100%, learn how to fight on the ground. You need to know how to sprawl. You need to know how to stop a takedown. But you also need to know how to fight on your feet because maybe most fights end up on the ground, but all fights start on your feet. So learn this first, then we'll get to the ground. This oblique kick, I lift my knee, it's pointing the outside. Normally, I'm, you see all martial arts kicks, they're either coming in straight or they're turning like a round kick or they're turning like a side kick. This is a weird little kick. The knee comes up and then boom. And the coolest thing about it is that you have better balance. It's a stronger, harder kick. And if they're rushing in and you decide that the best way to go is that low kick below the knee, right into the shin, and their foot all of a sudden, they're stepping in and whoo, you've hyperextended, you broke that knee, you break the lower part of the leg, which happens a lot. Just walk, go Google it. Uh, go look at some YouTube fights, John Bone Jones and his oblique kick. And you can see right, right in the ring what happens when he checks that, per, that other fighter coming in, just stops him cold with that oblique kick. Boom, straight in. And again, it just comes up and pushes forward. The knee comes out and pushes in and down. Practice that. That's the fifth technique. 
Yeah, I, um, I'm a big person, and uh, I, 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 I haven't had like, like I'm not gonna lie and say that I've had thousands of street fights or hundreds of street fights or dozens of street fights. I haven't. I, I was taught from a young age, if you're getting in street fights, there's something wrong with you, young man. Control your temper. Uh, and then I got into martial arts, and in martial arts you learn how not to fight. You learn how, but then I went in the Marine Corps, and as a military policeman, I did have an opportunity. And in the Marine Corps, as a Mar Marines fight all the time. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's something about the makeup. Uh, they just, they turn you into these like pit bulls, devil dogs, and you're just fighting all the time, like fist fighting. And so, yeah, we, so Brandon, tonight at uh, 6 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, that's the United States on the Eastern Coast at 6 p.m. My uh, student canceled, so I'm going to do a weapons class tonight at 6 Weapons live stream. It's either going to be the bow or the Joe or the cane. I have to go back and look and see what I haven't done in a while. Uh, or send, you know what, send me, your, uh, send me co some comments or send me an email. Go to pascalonely.com at the bottom. There's a, there's a contact box or whatever. Just send me a note. Hey, this is the weapon I want to learn tonight, and we'll do that tonight. But here's what I'm saying. In my fist fights, it's not a street fight because it didn't happen in the street, it happened in the barracks, right? Or it happened in the desert. Or, it, it, and it happened, or the gunnery sergeant said, okay, you guys take off your gun belts, because military policemen, you got a beef, let's settle it. I never went to the ground. I know how to go to the ground. I know how to fight on the ground. I know how to repple or grapple and wrestle. But I also know how to just hit them before they hit me very quickly for self-defense. We'll say for self-defense and stop them and drop them in their tracks for self-defense. And, and this is something I think about all the time. When we think about like, we, a lot of times these questions, people say, well, everybody has to learn how to be grappling because what if you fight a Gracie black belt? Well, if you fight a Gracie black belt, you don't really know. Um, I'm just north of Miami and West Palm Beach. North of Miami by an hour and a half. North of Fort Lauderdale. Beautiful part of Florida. It's so gorgeous out. I can't believe I'm inside right now when it's so beautiful outside out there. Beautiful weekend, it's like 90 degrees. It's like the perfect amount of humidity and the sun is just shining all the time. It's gorgeous, the ocean, the water was so flat. We went to the beach yesterday and everything was calm and flat. All right, so that kick oblique, the oblique kick, that was the fourth uh, martial art, four out of the five martial arts moves for self-defense, everyone should know. What I was saying about all fights start on your feet. Yes, it's true, you might go to the ground. I've never had to go to the ground. I also do know how to sprawl, but, um, I also understand the principle of timing and distance and striking first. And I also know the concept that most people who mouth off have nothing to back it up. So in other words, the more they, the more they say they're going to beat you up, unless, um, okay, uh, Pete, there's still a lot of stuff that you can do no matter what your, your challenges are physically, but the, the more people can do for, um, uh, for, for learning self-defense, it's just, it's, it's, the, it's here, right? And, and that's not to say that self-defense is 90% mental, because I don't believe it is. Self-defense is 90% physical. 10% is mental, but that 10% is extremely important, and it comes back to your principles of self-defense, situational awareness, getting a better position. And then number five of the five martial arts move for self-defense, everyone should know it's another principle, and this one comes from Tim Larkin in his book, is when violence is the answer. When violence is the answer. I put the link below. It's the second link down there, I think. But Tim Larkin's book, another guy who teaches very practical, effective self-defense and has a great channel here on YouTube and he breaks down these real life video cameras, like security cameras, video cam cameras, uh, cameras in prison, cameras in the, on the battlefield. And he shows you what really happens so that all of this speculation and thought and talk and yapping, none of it matters because now we have proof what really works. So, oh good, Pete, you got uh, Tim Larkin's book. So Tim Larkin's book, I put the link below if you wanna go look at it. I read this book a couple years ago when it came out. I've been following him ever since. And just brilliant, common, common sense, brilliant common sense. And he talks about target acquisition, which is the fifth martial arts move for self-defense. Everyone should know target acquisition. What can you remove or destroy for self-defense? And this, this works right into Pete's point. Pete said he's disabled. And the point of, the, of this whole video series, this point of the whole video series is that you don't have to be physically stronger than the other person, faster than the other person, younger than the other person. You have to understand the principles of self-defense 
number five in this video series or this tape today, this uh, training we're doing right now, target acquisition. Use self-defense, principle number five, which is using violence against the person who's trying to use violence against you. Can you remove their ability to see, their ability to breathe through their nose, through their mouth, through their throat permanently. These are temporary, he can't breathe, he's done. Through the, uh, his ability to stand upright, hitting the solar plexus, his ability to breathe, right here, that fascia right apart. These are all targets. The groin, the joints, the neck. Hit that in that, uh, the, the nerves, the blood flushes out of the brain, unconscious. Do you have to be stronger? No. Do you have to be faster? No. The nose, how many pounds of pressure can you use to break that and make the blood come out? Not very many pounds. Uh, box their ears, right? Pop their eardrums. How many pounds of pressure? Not many. Do you have to be super strong to be able to do 500 pushups? No. Do you have to be able to do a Wing Chun punch or one inch punch or do boxing? No. You can take your thumb and you stick it right in his eye and you push. You stick it right here and you push. And it doesn't matter how big and how strong he is. All of a sudden, you've taken what you have. You don't have to be stronger, not even in the least. And then whew, just drive that straight through his eye, into his nose. Pull that nose, stick that, grab that ear, rip it through the throat, into the mouth, back this way. Use this part of your hand or this part of your bony arm, even better, to come right into the throat, right? Use this elbow, driving right in to the solar plexus or up and into the solar plexus right here or this hand straight down, smashing the nose. What targets can you remove or destroy? Maybe it's not something here. Maybe it's that elliptical kick. Maybe you take out his knee or you take out his ankle for self-defense. Maybe your knee has to drive up under their body into the groin, lifting them off the ground. Not because, yeah, fish hook guy. Uh, caught you, or, yeah, caught you says fish hook guy. Yeah, this is the fish hook. I, it's an awful thing. When I was in, um, the year after graduating from high school, I came back after boot camp on my 10 day leave or whatever. And this kid that we all knew was just mentally not right had beat up another kid who was just a bully that beat everybody else up. These two guys were bullies. They got in a real bad fish fight and he fish hooked him, or a fist fight, I don't mean fish fight, fist fight, ripped his skin from here to here and he, his eye, he put his hand here and boom, talk about using violence. And it wasn't really self-defense, it was just two really violent, awful people. The one guy, the guy that did that did some really worse things and I think he's probably still in jail if he's still alive put his hand here and popped his eyeball right out of his head. It was hanging on his cheek. Does it take a lot of pressure? No, it takes a mental decision to make it happen for self-defense. It's making the shift in your head. That's why I say it's not 90% mental, but that 10% is very important. It's make, and, and that's where you're gonna, you're gonna get this. You read that book, get the Tim Larkin book, read about using violence against violence. Use violence first. How do you use it to stop that person from using violence against you? And yeah, security guards. I've got, um, when I was a security guard, I've got too many stories about much smaller people using violence to stop a much, much bigger person who was just angry. And here's my final point. Now, this, now I've already given you the five martial arts move for self defense. Everyone should know. I'm going to go over it really quickly. I'm going to throw within the final point. Number one, situation awareness, specifically with the phone. Put the phone in your pocket if you need it to get around, like you're using the. Uh, the map app or whatever, get to a, pl a place where you can put your back up against the wall, hold the phone in front of you. You look around first, make sure somebody's not coming up to take your phone out of your hand, and look, and look at the phone. You can see what's on the right, you can see what's on the left. That's called your periphery. You might not know this, but anytime you take your eyes off of the level of the horizon, you know, where the earth and the, the sky come together, when you lose the, the horizon, all of a sudden, your peripheral vision goes from, I can still see my fingers here to about here. I can't see anything above here. And if you can't see it, you don't block it. This is something I see all the time in the class because kids aren't paying attention. And they're practicing those blocking motions or they're practicing the blocking motions. When they look down, they go like this. They're not blocking anything It's because you can't see it. So make sure your eyes are always straight. Anything that distracts that, stick it in your pocket. So number one is situation awareness. Number two of the five martial arts moves for self-defense everyone should know is the flinch block. Get into a better position. Learn it from Tony Blower. That's that first link. It says SPEAR system. S-P-E-A-R. I don't even remember what it stands for. Go look it up. Something about personal protection or something or another. 
but I know he makes great spear gear because I've used it. We used to, in the, uh, when I did uh, some training with the National Guard in a special group, we used the spear gear. He makes gear that you can put on and just beat the snot out of each other and practice these techniques. Oh, that's the other place that I practiced it. With those guys, we did the flinch block. We did just immediate direct explosive, very vicious self-defense. Number three, the flinch block. Number four of the five martial arts moves for self-defense everyone should know is that two punch and a lateral move. Two punch and a lateral, two punches, get out of the way. Two punches. I went to Pat McNamara's uh, uh, T-Max. Uh, I don't even know what T-Max stands for either. <laughs> but Pat Max on here, if you guys haven't seen him, you'll watch that guy and you'll just crack up. He does um, dude something. Every Wednesday, dude stuff or... <laughs> He's like a rock and roll dude, he, but he used to be a uh, Delta uh, operator. If you know anything about the military, special forces, CAG, uh, combat applications group, the Delta guys, the Delta guys are, you know, you hear about SEAL Team Six and, six and their super black hat, black ops kind of, Delta team is a little bit above that. When they, when they have to extract, the, the president gets kidnapped, they send in Delta team. That's what this guy did. And he, he's got that mentality, brilliant. And then his practical application of stuff is amazing. I went to one, a couple of, or one of his courses where he covered a couple different things that he teaches, both the hand-to-hand -hand stuff and situation awareness, how to get prepared. And then he, uh, a lot of shooting. Lots of, it was lots of shoes, like 2,000, or like a, yeah. Uh, Delta is a tier one operator. SEAL, six team, SEAL team six is a tier one operator. And then tier two is like regular Navy SEALs. I say regular, because there's nothing regular about them. Uh, Force Recon in the Marine Corps. Um, yeah, Chuck Norris did a movie called Delta Force. Chuck Norris himself was not Delta Force. He's martial arts and a movie guy. Um, and then uh, regular, uh, Green Berets. Green, uh, Green Berets are regular uh, special, they're t tier two operators. But, but again, tier two, that's, you know, that's like saying like a regular um, world champion, right? And tier one are those top, top, top guys. So they're all, they're all really sweet um, at the highest level. Highest level of training, which is what, you know, sweet training, whatever. Anyway, Pat McNamara, two punches, lateral move, two punches, lateral move. And then we got this course. We get all these guys together, some uh, retired Green Berets, other uh, law enforcement guys. And I was shocked. I was shocked at how many guys could not throw two punches and move to the side without almost falling down. Or I was shocked by how weak those two punches were. And it wasn't because of age or anything other than they hadn't trained. So, and, and people say to me all the time, yeah, those things work, they only work if you train. And I'm like, yes, of course they work. Now, um, self-defense and boxing is not the same thing. Boxing is boxing, self-defense is self-defense, but you can take techniques from boxing and apply it to self-defense. And when you do, make sure you practice. Even if you're just punching in the air, learn how to throw a full extension, get that hand turned over so that pop, when you hit, pop, you can bam, snap it and get it back, get it back. Boom, and when you hit, it's got some sting behind it, right? One of the worst things you can do is, is lightly punch. You gotta just smash and smash and smash when you do self-defense. It's gotta be fast, explosive, immediate direction, explosive. Now, number four of the five martial arts moves for self-defense everyone should know is that elliptical kick. And that comes in, they're just rushing in, that just gives you something to do. Below, the way to do the elliptical kick or not the elliptical, I always call it, it's an oblique kick. An oblique kick, 45 degree angle, whatever you want to call it. I've heard it called many things. Your knee comes up and out. This is different from all other kicks you see in martial arts, and then it just stomps forward. When you, you do it quickly, it's going to break the knee, it's going to hyperextend the lower leg, it's going to put them on the ground, it's going to stop them from getting close. Plus, if they're paying it to your hands in a good flinch block, and they're looking at you, and all of a sudden you've covered off your face, they might have to get aggressive and come in. You bought yourself a chance to, boom, just lift that knee and stamp or stomp. Lift your knee and stomp right into their shin. Lift that knee and hopefully you're wearing hard shoes. Hopefully you're wearing some hard soled shoes and you just rip everything off of their leg. Aikido Joe, is Aikido Joe a great weapon? That was a question I just saw. It's my, it was my, one of my favorites. I love the Aikido Joe. If you learn how to use a Joe for self-defense, you can use a walking stick for self-defense. You can use a hiking stick for self-defense. You learn how to use the Aikido Joe, you'll be like Morgan from The Walking Dead, learning how to defend yourself against the zombie apocalypse for self-defense. 
But number five, the five, fifth of the five martial arts moves for self-defense everyone should know is target acquisition. It comes from Tim Larkin. Look him up below. Tim Larkin's got a great channel here. If you haven't followed him yet, go follow him now. But also get his book and read it. Invest a little, a couple of your dollars. You know, it doesn't cost much. But the link's below. Read that book. Understand the difference between martial arts and self-defense. Martial arts is not self-defense. Martial arts is not self-defense. Boxing is not. Wrestling is not. You can use the techniques from boxing, from martial arts. You can practice martial arts in a way that you're getting good at self-defense. That's what you have to do. Oh, cool. Brandon said he got a Bruce Lee DVD and a t-shirt for his birthday. Brandon, happy birthday. I bet that t-shirt looks pretty sweet. And Pete says he practiced Aikido. Walking with a Joe is like walking with a katana. Yes. And Pete, that's why I like that self-defense cane. I'll probably do self-defense cane tonight. Um, or the bow. And maybe I'll have time. We'll do half and half. Or maybe we'll do the video. We can do a video. I, I like to do a fighting with sticks video where we use all the different sticks. Long staff, short staff, medium staff, collie sticks or a screamer, um, the tanfa, the side handle stick, the nunchucks. We can do it all. Uh, we can even do the, I've got an expandable baton. People ask me all the time, can you use one of those police expandable batons for self-defense? We can talk about that. But number five, target acquisition, eyes, nose, ears. What can you remove or destroy? Remove or destroy, that's the question. You take a breath, that, that breath, calms you down. That breath gets oxygen in the brain, relaxes the muscles. When you have relaxed muscles, you move faster. Bring. I've got another vote for Kane tonight. When you take a breath, ask yourself the question, what targets will you remove or destroy for self-defense? And then fully commit to your strike. Don't, don't box them. If you're going for that eye, you try to stick your thumb in the front of the eye here and you try to drive it through their brain Try to figure out why. Why are you attacking me? Let me see if I can read your thoughts with my thumb going right through your brain. Straight through to the other side for self-defense. You have to commit on those strikes. That's my final idea. My final thought is that if you don't commit on all of these strikes, immediate direct and explosive, but follow through, none of them are going to work. And then I'm going to teach you a million other techniques. Tonight we'll work on the cane. You guys have been really awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for being part of this channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Send me your comments. Put them in the comments section below and share this video. I'm not always right. And you guys have great ideas. And that's why this is such a valuable community because we all learn from each other. But I'm going to say it again. I am not 100% right all the time. I'm not. There's no way. I'll never pretend that I am. And I might say today that uh, the sky is blue and the next week I walk outside and it's gray. And I'm gonna to have to say, you know what? It was, may have been blue last week when I thought it was blue, but now I can see it's gray. So today I'm going with the sky is gray. So I'm always going, yeah, thank, you're welcome. Um, Kim Green says, thanks for turning me on to Tim Larkin, great stuff. You're welcome, it's my pleasure. But my point is, learn everything you can and keep your brain turned on. It's like right now, if you look at what's happening in the world, you, you can learn, you get all this information and it feels like some of it, they're lying to us. I'm just going to throw that out, right? So you have to start making your own decision. Well, why are you telling me to do this? Why do I have to do that? Is that really what that is? And make your own decision. Stop waiting for someone else to make a decision for you. Start to take back, take back your power. And your power is, you know what? I, I, I don't, I'll say, I don't know. I don't know where the truth is, but I'm going to stay open to it and I'm gonna stop being afraid. And anytime I feel afraid, I'm gonna take some action, moving in the direction of not being afraid. And whatever that looks like for you, take that first step. Maybe it's training. If it's tra Training is always what it is for me. Get some training, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Critical thinking, thank you.